Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling and welcome back to part two of my What We're Doing for Eighth Grade series. So my, my daughter is my youngest that I'm homeschooling and she's in her eighth grade year. And today we're gonna talk about the books we're gonna be doing is read alouds. I have a ton of things that I want to share with her that we haven't gotten to yet. And so this is kind of a plain catch up year where I'm adding in all the books that I'm like, we need to read this together. So some of them I have here, some of them are missing <laughs> and I'm, I'm still looking for them or I've had to purchase another copy. It's fine, but let's go through and talk about the books that we're gonna be reading together this year. The first book that I want to talk about, these are not in the order we're going to read them because I haven't worked out exactly what order we're going in yet, but for the most part I think I know. So like I know we're starting off our year with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams because like how have we not gotten to this? I, I know she knows a lot about it because we refer to this book constantly. Like <laughs> I feel like most of our family in jokes are about this book. So she's excited to finally know what all those things mean. <laughs> so, so we're gonna start our year with that. And then another book that I'm really excited to read with her, and I hope that she will also get excited. She's a little bit like, are you sure I'm gonna like this? And that's Watership Down by Richard Adams. Um, we have a whole Adams thing going, don't we? <laughs> but. This is one of my absolute favorite books and I love reading it aloud and I cannot wait to share this with her. Um, again, a lot of our family like inside jokes and things come from here too. So less of a funny book. I mean, not joke jokes, but like we reference it quite a lot. We have rabbits nearby and I constantly refer to them as Hazel and Fiverr. <laughs> so does not matter how many different rabbits I've seen. They're probably all different. I still think of them as being Hazel and Viber. So we're gonna be reading this. Cannot wait to dive into that with her. We're gonna read The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. This is um, the first book in the Chaos Walking trilogy. And to me, this is a perfect trilogy. Like there aren't many, but every now and then there is just like this perfect, like every book is spectacular. And like, we already did one of my perfect trilogies a year or two ago, I think it was a year ago, we read The Hunger Games and she loved it. So I'm thinking this will also be up her alley. Another series we're gonna be starting, I don't know if we're gonna read the whole trilogy for either of these, but this is another perfect trilogy that I'm like, I really wanna start this with her and see if she likes it enough to continue. And that is the Ark of the Scythe series and we're gonna start with Scythe by Neil Schusterman because <sighs> another perfect trilogy. Like this series, it might be my favorite trilogy after Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings, Ark of the Scythe, Hunger Games, Knife of Never Letting Go. I don't know, I haven't, I haven't actually organized this yet. Maybe that's a different video where I talk about my favorite trilogies, but I'm excited for her to, to read this because like, again, this is a book series that I feel like we reference it a lot. Like our Wi-Fi is called Thunderhead <laughs> and, and I feel like we talk about this series a lot and I want her to find out all the stuff we're talking about. I like know what we're talking about. Because we're doing a space year, I mean, that's why I picked Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but also a book I've read more recently that my kid, my older kids have not read yet, but that I thought was amazing and would tie in so well with what we're doing this year. So I have Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir on standby. I almost put The Martian, but I think knowing my daughter, she'll like this better than The Martian. And if she likes this enough, maybe she'll want to do The Martian next. So. We're gonna listen to the audiobook of this because 
I don't think I could do Rocky justice. <laughs> so, and it's done so well in the audiobook that I feel like, why, why mess with perfection? So we're gonna be listening to this one on audio. Then, these are just books that I'm like, how have we not read this yet? We have not read The Giver by Lois Lowry. I, I kept meaning to pull this out for her, and for whatever reason, we just, ne we never got to it. So I wanted to read this with her because I feel like this book gives you so much to talk about, and it's a really great, like, intro to dystopian fiction. And we've done some dystopian books before, but I feel like this is a classic that we haven't read yet, so I wanted to include it. She Hasn't Read A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. Like, what are we doing? I don't know how we haven't gotten to this yet, but I didn't even realize we hadn't gotten to it yet when I mentioned it the other day, and she was like, what's that? And I was like, wait, we've never read this? So we're reading this. Then I wanted to start her on some Terry Pratchett, but I feel she's kind of like me where it comes to fantasy. And I feel like if we're gonna do a Terry Pratchett, we should start with Nation because it's not Discworld. So it gets her into his writing style. And then if she likes this, we might try, and I haven't decided which book yet, but we might do Mort because I did Small Gods. I think we also did Good Omens. And I don't know, occasionally it worked for my twins, <clears throat> but, I, but I feel like some of it was just blowing over their heads. So I have a feeling it would be too much for her. So we're gonna start here because I feel like this also goes really well with a big history year where we're doing a lot of sciencey stuff. So it ties in nicely. So when we start talking about early human and humanoid beings, one of the books I want to read, I could not find. Like I've looked everywhere and it's just, it's not here. So I just ordered a new copy and that is Endangered by Elliot Schreffer. This book is so good and my twins still remember it pretty vividly. And we read that when they were like 13. So it's been a long time. They're 20 now. So, so I wanted to read this with her. This book is about a girl who is visiting her mother in the Congo and her mother works on a reserve where they protect the bonobos and a war breaks out and she ends up trapped on the other side of the fence in the enclosure with the bonobos. And then she has to go find her mother who is on in a different part of the country for something. So she and this baby bonobo bond with each other as they're journeying through the Congo and it's such a good story but it gives you so much information about bonobos which is just fascinating and so I wanted to read that with her can't find it so I, I just bought a copy which means it's definitely going to turn up now <laughs> The other book I wanted to read with her is one I've talked about a lot on here, so you guys probably have already guessed what book it's going to be, but it's Eva by Peter Dickinson. This is a story about a girl who's in a tragic accident, and she has her mind put into the body of a chimp. And so she's still in there, like it's still her. She remembers her past and everything. She remembers how to read and write. So she has this all these abilities of a human, but she's in the body of a chimp. And so she also has a lot of memories of being a chimp, which it, it, the whole story is just so fascinating. And it's one of those questions of just because you can, should you? And what would this be like? And so it's a really interesting, thought-provoking book, and I think my daughter will like it. Then I wanted to do some Shakespeare with her because can you believe it? She's now 13 years old and we haven't done any Shakespeare. This is very unlike me. All my older kids were doing Shakespeare much younger than her, and I just don't know why we haven't yet. So I decided what would be the play that would hook her. And I think for her it would be Macbeth because she really likes dark, creepy things. And while my older kids all started with like a Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a lot more fun and kind of silly, I think she would get more out of Macbeth, which my older kids also read. So like, 
we're, we're gonna hopefully get to this and we might watch, I don't know what we're gonna watch yet because I know there's been a couple of newer Macbeth movies that have come out, but I haven't seen them yet. So let me know down below in the comments, what's a good version of Macbeth that we could watch together that is appropriate for a 13 year old? <laughs> like, I don't think there's anything too bad in Macbeth besides obviously all the murder. And then finally, the last book I'm gonna show you is another one of my absolute favorite books that I've wanted to read with her for a little while now, but I feel like she's maybe now, she's mature enough to handle it. And that's The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which is another one of my absolute favorite books. And while I love this book, I'm also a little bit nervous about reading it again because I don't know how, I've read it a lot. I've read this book at least a dozen times now and it always makes me cry like not even just cry like sob so it never fails to like break me as a human but like it's also one of the most beautiful things i've ever read so such an important book to me and i'm hopeful <laughs> that my daughter will appreciate it. So that's what I have on tap for us to read this year. I'm really excited. Like I've stacked all of my favorite books together <laughs> and I'm a little bit nervous that she's not going to like any of them, but I hope, I hope that she does enjoy this year of reading with me because like, I don't know, I'm realizing now I only have five years left. Like you guys, I, I'm at the end here. I can see the end and I want to get like the most out of it that I can before we're done and then I'm done. Like, I don't know. I love homeschooling my kids. I'm, I'm a giant nerd. I love doing this. I'm excited to get into this year with her. So I think next I'm going to talk about our language arts for the year, which is going to be kind of a short, boring video, to be honest, but that's what we're going to go with next. I'll see you in the next one. Happy reading. Bye.